Okay, uh, finally, uh, we're gonna be talking now about the CAPM regression analysis, uh, talking uh, about alphas and betas, but uh, we're gonna run an analysis on uh, an asset, and you can do that with literally any kind of asset. But, uh, so let's get it going. Uh, so if you guys remember uh, from the CAPM equation, uh, we can just kind of play with that a little bit and we are gonna end it up here with this equation here, uh, which states here the excess returns of risk uh, of asset uh, R, our expected returns, uh, plus alpha, which should be zero in a, in a cap and word. Beta, everything that matters to determining returns of an asset according to cap M, and market minus the risk-free rate. Uh, so, what we're going to be doing here is uh, we have here data on uh, the market. Okay, so uh, back into uh, 1963, this is uh, everything together, but it should be uh, July, for instance, this should be August. So we have monthly data but all the way back to 1963 for the market, the risk-free rate. And we have here a weighted average, uh, weighted value weighted average uh, returns for uh, the aero uh, sector, okay? And we are gonna analyze it and try to find out, okay, uh, did CAPM uh, hold or did CAPM uh, successfully predicted its returns over that period? Or did aero sector uh, beat the market or had excess or under uh, perform the market and have uh, lower returns than the market on this uh, time frame here? So uh, first thing that I'm gonna do uh, to start here, I'm gonna start calculating here the standard deviation of both standard deviation and just drag it down here. Uh, I'm gonna calculate the correlation coefficient between the market and the aero sector, uh, just so we can get here first the beta, just for a first intuition here. So uh, correlation coefficient times the standard deviation of the asset divided by the standard deviation of the market. So 1.15. Uh, so we would expect that uh, that aero sector have its returns amplified by ma market movement, right? And the market we don't even need to calculate; it should be equal one. Okay. So now let's try to uh, observe what uh, kind of returns are we talking about. Uh, let's let's put this equation here uh, over the the graph so we can analyze it. So this right uh, left hand side here. Uh, we have the expected return of asset or aero sector minus the risk-free rate. I'm gonna do here the aero minus risk-free rate. And on the right side, uh, we have here market minus risk-free rate. So market returns minus risk-free rate. I'm gonna just copy that all the way down or over here. And I had it, already have it plotted uh, those here on the y-axis, we have the aero excess returns over the risk-free and market returns on the x or market excess returns on the x-axis. And as we can see, it looks like uh, there's ups and downs here, but uh, if cap and holds, if we draw a line here uh, in between, it should, uh, the intercept or alpha should be equal zero. And that's exactly what we are gonna be doing here. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use the data analysis pack package in Excel. Uh, if you don't have it, go to File, Options, uh, Add-ins, and it should be down here if you don't. You click Go to install it, but you should have it already installed by now. Uh, so data analysis, I'm going to run here uh, a regression. On the Y range, or for input Y, we have here, Aero minus risk free for the X. I have market minus risk free. I'm going to highlight here that my uh, regression has labels. So, uh, just so you know that this first two rows are labels, are not uh, numbers. And I'm going to dump the, the resume here on the new worksheet. Hit OK. 
boom. Uh, so what we have here, let me just format it as number. It's a summary uh, of this linear regression that we ran. Uh, as we can see here, we have uh, our intercept, which is our alpha. We remember the equation. Let me just, let me paste it back here so we can remember here. So it would be exactly the same as uh, if we had a plus bx and this is y. That's why we can do that, right? Uh, so intercept is our alpha. And as we can see here, it's positive, very small, but positive. And this is our coefficient or beta, our slope of the curve. So 1.156, just so you guys know, this is very close to the, what uh, beta formula yield, uh, yielded. Uh, it's probably some rounding thing or a variance population or sample that they use, but it should be very close. Uh, and we can see here that the alpha is actually positive for the aero, se aero sector, meaning that they had excess returns to the, comparing to the market. However, by doing that, we can take a step forward and we have here the p-values, which uh, if we are using a 5% uh, or 95% level of confidence, it should be lower than 5% if it's significant. And as we can see, 0.37 or 37% is way higher than 0.05%, commonly used sometimes 0.10. Uh, so, and although it's a positive alpha, it's not significant, meaning that the aero sector did not beat the market uh, on that, that framework, did not have any excess returns on that. In fact, we could have uh, just have drawn here the trend line and showed the equation here on chart. And that's exactly what uh, we saw there on that uh, regression analysis. The only difference is that by doing by doing it, uh, we can determine if it's a significant alpha or not. Okay, and we can do that uh, instead of a arrow here. We can use a fund return, a mutual fund return, farmland return, any sort of investment here. Okay. Uh, so this concludes our uh, regression analysis on alpha and capm. Uh, see you guys soon.